Welcome back to Question Sense with me, Matt. Okay, fairly sunny day, not very warm, very, uh, well, it doesn't really feel like the summer in South London today. So I've done the school run and I thought I would put together a video. Now this is the third instalment in our gentlemanly fragrance collection. And today we're looking at extraordinary fragrances for extraordinary gentlemen. Now this was going to be a top 10, but um, I just couldn't do it. It was, um, I've got too many that fit in this category. So I've had to do a top 11 with an honorable mention. So cheating a little bit, I do apologize. Um, but before we go any further, I just wanted to um, say something to a friend of the channels, a friend of the fragrance community in the UK. There's a chap called Kenneth who's, Wonderful musician, all around good guy, and he's got a bit of a fight on his hands at the moment. He's dealing with a really, really horrible um, disease, and he's doing it in such an admirable way. I'd like to dedicate this, or me and Rich would like to dedicate this video to him and to his family, and just to say thanks for the lovely little clips of music that he sends. And, you know, this is a video about extraordinary gentlemen and the way that Kenneth is um, dealing with his situation and, you know, just being an amazing chap. I couldn't think of any more sort of, uh, you know, any more of an example of, of an extraordinary gentleman. So, Kenneth, this video is for you and your family and keep doing what you're doing and all the best. And we wish you every success in your in your battle. So, listen, Kenneth, thanks for being a pal, mate, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. So, anyway, on with the list. So, when we're looking at extraordinary fragrances for extraordinary gentlemen, Obviously, these aren't shy and retiring fragrances. These are statement fragrances that will get you noticed. These are perfumes with spirit and character and performance. Um, some are kind of beast mode and some are not. Some are a little bit more subtle, but they're all quite extraordinary. Now, the easiest thing for me to do would be to get eight autoparases and a couple of Nassimotos and say, bang, there's your list. So I've kind of been very strict with myself. So I don't just want to talk about the same fragrances, although, you know, a lot of the fragrances I wear would easily be in this list. So I've tried to kind of mix it up and bring some different fragrances into the uh, into the mix to, uh, you know, show you what else is out there, not just the standards. But I have to say, if this list um, was weather reliant, then Bergamask Auto Parisi would be the number one. But I've barred myself from using it this time. There will be some familiar faces in here and there will be some new ones to you guys. So I hope you enjoy the list, and these are extraordinary fragrances for extraordinary people. So let's start off again, as normal with my listings, they're not in any particular order. Um, that, well, they're not actually, they're, they're, they're gonna be numerical, but ultimately any one of these could be number one on any given day. Uh, all right, the number one is the number one. All right, so let's start. First off, we're gonna look at this one, which is Le Yukawam Barasasi. This is quite well known as a Tom Ford's Tuscan leather clone, and it's beautiful. It's an absolute banger. It's fruity, it's leathery, it's massive, it's huge. I actually prefer this to Tuscan leather. Um, sorry, Rich, because Rich is a massive fan of Tuscan leather, but I love this one so much. The performance is amazing, and I understand that the later versions or the more recent versions of Tuscan leather aren't quite as, you know, haven't quite got the performance that the original has. This is amazing. This is a true beast mode, beast mode fragrance. It's huge. It has a raspberry note, it has a leather, it has often been sort of described as smelling a bit like cocaine. I have no idea about that. Uh, but trust me, this is a statement fragrance. It's massive. If you've ever smelt this or you've ever smelt Tuscan leather, you know that smell is instantly recognizable. If someone's wearing this and walks in the room, you're, you know, they are making a statement and it's you know undeniable that they're wearing you know Tuscan leather or this. I mean, to be honest with you, if someone's wearing this, you won't know if it's this or Tuscan leather. They smell so alike. It's just this one lasts a bit longer and projects a bit more. Um, beautiful fragrance, and obviously it comes in at a fraction of the cost as a bottle of Tom Ford's Tuscan leather. So, well, you know, highly recommended. Please explore this one if that kind of thing is is for you. If you want a massive leather frag, then please have a look at that beautiful fragrance and excellent value. Okay, next up we have. Apri number no. four, which is from Thomas Cosmala, Apri L'Amour number no. four. This is huge, another beast mode fragrance. It takes a brave guy to wear this because I think some people think it may be a little bit feminine. I don't, I think this is an incre incredibly masculine take on MFK's BR540. This is a beautiful fragrance. It's sweet, it's woody, it has that candy floss vibe to it, but there's some citrus in the opening that makes it a little bit more masculine. Absolute beast. This lasts forever. It has the biggest CRs, I think, of anything possible. 
This or Bergamask, you know, they're just huge fragrances. This is really, really a statement fragrance. If you're in a room, everyone will smell you. So you've got to be up for it if you're wearing this because you will certainly um, generate attention. People will certainly talk to you about it. And this follows you around like a cloud for days and days. The performance is absolutely ridiculous. Now, I understand some people kind of, with this type of fragrance, you know, the BR540, this, and all the other kind of um, fragrances that you do that woody, saffron, um, airy sort of fragrance. Some people do get a little bit nose blind to it. I don't. This is one of the few of that ilk that I can smell constantly, and it's a beautiful smell. I absolutely adore this one. Fabulous stuff, but it is big and it does indeed make a statement. So you may well have to be extraordinary to wear it. I love this one though. Um, in the UK, I'm afraid it's still a Harrods exclusive, so it can be a little bit difficult to get your hands on. Um, but please do try because it's it's well worth exploring if you if you like a sweet perfume. And this is a very sweet perfume, so you know be aware of that. Okay, next up we have an old school classic that I think is still um, relevant, and this is Boss Number One. Now this has been around sort of since the 80s and it's, a, it's very much of its time. It's a powerhouse. It's got that vibe of the 80s. It's just, it's great. It's, and the reason that this is for me in the extraordinary list is because not very many people are wearing these kind of fragrances at the moment. You've got to be a real fraghead to be interested in this. And the other thing is, it's really, really affordable at the moment. This is a huge bottle and you know, it's a, a really, really good price. You get it from Amazon. You, you know, it's a sub, it's around a £30 mark, and you can probably get it cheaper than that. I'm not using a vintage option, um, although you can get older bottles of it on eBay. The reason being, I think this is just as good, or probably, I mean, it's not going to be just as good. Obviously, the original is going to have real oak moss in it and stuff like that. Um, so that, you know, the original formulation is always going to be better. But this is easy to get hold of, and you don't have to troll eBay, and you haven't got any of the dangers of buying off eBay with this. Um, and basically, it still smells fantastic. It probably, as I say, maybe not as good as the original um, option, but it's really, really good. This is uh, a kind of a spicy citrus. There's uh, lavender in here. There's lots of honey. So be aware, this sort of sandalwood honey with a bit of tobacco dry down is, um, you've got to like honey. You really do like to have, really must love honey. Now, when you read up on this, it's quite funny because everybody seems to reference Gordon Gecko and uh, Wall Street, the movie, because that's obviously where this was born. Um, and I can imagine power brokers of the day were absolutely doused in this stuff because it is a real sort of masculine ugh, kind of thruster of a fragrance. However, it because it has honey in it, it has kind of like a little bit of a pissy smell to it at times. So for me, this is kind of like an incontinent Michael Douglas running around on set of a film. But it's, it's not unpleasant, it's good fun, and it really does make a statement. I love this fragrance, and I think you know it could well be worth exploring for you guys. But please be aware, this probably isn't for the younger thruster. This is certainly for the more mature fragrance enthusiast. Very masculine. Um, I think a woman would struggle to pull this one off. Um, but then again, as I've always said, the right woman with the right attitude and the, you know, the right level of confidence will absolutely smell amazing wearing it. But you must like honey, um, because there is quite a... A big part of this fragrance a lifespan okay next up we have something that you never really hear about and this really is an extraordinary fragrance one i've been championing for a while and this is from angela flanders in london and this is amber nui now this is my favorite amber and i know that's quite a controversial thing to say because there's so many great ones out there but when i bought this i tested quite a few and this is the one that i like the most this is animalic there's civet in this there's booze in this, there's woods in this, and then it becomes a very warm, spicy amber. There's a little bit of incense in here as well, I can detect. Huge performance, really big. I mean, I've had this a long time and I've barely dented it because you don't need a lot. It's a big fragrance. Very, very intoxicating, but because of the civet and the booze, it can be a little bit too much for people. It certainly gets attention when you wear it, and it would certainly be worn by an extraordinary person. Obviously, I wear it, and I'm pretty extraordinary. Um, just a quick word, my Nurses Rock t-shirt is in the wash, hence I'm wearing this one today. So uh, hopefully the Nurses Rock t-shirt, I'll have that back for the next video. But yeah, please have a look at this. This is a superb fragrance. They do a sample collection from the house, so you can get it. They have a shop in Spitalfields, a shop in Columbia Row in London. So it is a, it's a London-centric house. Um, great pedigree, been around for a long, long time. Uh, and, and I just don't understand why I don't hear more of it. But if you want an amber, have a look at this. This is a big fragrance. 
The Civet may make it a hardware for some, but I think this is awesome, very much in the extraordinary category. Okay, next up, we're gonna look at a bit of a cheapie, one that I love and one that always gets compliments. And I think this is certainly uh, perfect for the extraordinary gentleman to wear. And this is Shagaf Oud from Swiss Arabian, a real cheapie, fantastic performance. It's sweet, it's oody, it's woodsy, it's, it's exotic, it has excellent performance, superb sillage, and it really does make a statement. This is a great fragrance. This is one I wear for work an awful lot, especially in the colder months. You can wear it in the in the summer. I wouldn't wear it on a hot, hot day though, because I think you might become a bit like Bleh. a bit a bit clogged down with it because it is quite a heavy fragrance. But it's sweet, it has that sort of prowling uh, dry down, so it's almost kind of getting towards the gourmand sort of territory. Tiny little bit of rose in here to pick it up, but it's not a rose-based fragrance. If you want that, have a look at Shagafood Aswad, which is a, a traditional rose oud. This is beautiful, um, and I, I don't think there's many out there that can beat this in terms of value for performance. It really, really is a great fragrance, and one that always generates interest, and it just makes you smell amazing. It has a Middle Eastern vibe, which it's supposed to, and if you like that, you will love this. So there we have it. Okay, <clears throat> next up we have a Montana that doesn't really get talked about anymore. And this is Aoud Musk. This is beautiful. This is a kind of a leathery, saffrony, woodsy um, fragrance with uh, Montal Aoud in it. You know, that synthetic oud that they use really well. Beautiful fragrance. This gets compliments like, really, really gets compliments. I had a compliment on this in the supermarket the other day. And bearing in mind, this is when people were all wearing masks. So the sillage and the projection on this is excellent. For the first couple of hours, this is very bold. It's very loud. It's uber uber masculine one of the most masculine fragrances i own stunning frag um it's not for the shy it's not for the retiring if you want to make an impression if you want to make a statement and you want to be out there have a look at this and because it's one of the older montels i found it um it's in a lot of the discounters at the moment fragrance x are carrying it which ship all over the world so don't worry about that you can you can use them and that's going for a really really great price it's loud as i say for the first couple of hours and the longevity is good this gets me a good eight hours i, I wear it for work and get through a working shift no problem at all and the added bonus is this smells incredibly like nasamato's duro but obviously this is a lot more affordable and i hate to say because you know as much as i love nasamato Duro, as it is at the moment, doesn't have great performance on me. That's why I don't own it. But now I have this, I don't need to own it because they do smell very, very much alike. But this one has got better performance. And obviously it's a 100ml bottle and you can get it for half the price you can of a bottle of Nassimato Duro. So if you like that vibe, if you want to look like or smell like Burt Reynolds in a smoking in the bandit, you know, with a denim shirt and the buttons undone. Have a look at this, because that is about as masculine as it gets. Beautiful fragrance, um, really does make a statement. Projection and sillage are excellent, especially in the first couple of, couple of hours. It's a massive fragrance. Right, next up, we have from Min New York, Barrel. Now, you know, I've spoken to a couple of you about this. This is a very expensive fragrance. I think it's 220 pounds in Harrods at the moment for a 70 ml bottle. But keep your eye on the discounters. This popped up and I paid less than 30 pounds for this um, from TK Maxx. Beautiful fragrance. It's boozy, it's earthy. There's like peat in there, there's tuberose. And I think for me, it's the tuberose that makes this because it takes all those heavier notes and puts a little floral boost underneath it. And it's just such a lovely fragrance. It's very, very manly, very, very airy. Um, I'm really, really unique. This, oh, I adore wearing this. This is more of a winter leaning fragrance for sure. I have worn it on summer evenings and it's been perfect, but I wouldn't wear it in the heat. Um, it is a statement maker and people will be intrigued as to what you're wearing. If you wear this, the chances are you're not gonna be in company that smell anything like you because it has a unique a set of uh, notes that just, just lift it. And as I say, you've got this really boozy, um, peaty, woody opening, which is very, very heavy and very, very strong. But the light floral from the tuberose just pushes it all out and makes it far more enjoyable than say something that didn't have that. You need, I think, something to lift the heaviness and it's just a, a glorious wear. I thoroughly recommend this. I love the presentation on these as well. The bottles are great, the solid wood cap. You know, it's an expensive luxury fragrance. Of course it is, but if you can get it for a deal, you know, get it for a deal. And if you're super wealthy and you don't care and you want to buy it, just buy it because it's an absolute banger. Really, really good performance as well. Beautiful fragrance. Okay, next up, one that you don't hear very much about, and this is called Noir Dorian, and this is by Evody, and this is beautiful. This is not a big hitter. It's a very, very long lasting kind of soft fragrance, but this is all about spices. It's all about cinnamon. It's a 
bit woodsy. There's, oh, it's beautiful. It's, it's been compared to a lighter version of Laird of Desert de Marocain by Andy Tao, and I kind of get that. But to me, this, if, if I was to describe it, this would be more like taking um, Geroff's Ivory Root and LDDM and mixing them together, and you'd have something a bit like this. This is a really, really lovely fragrance. When I first got it, I was slightly concerned about the performance on it. I didn't think it um, was, was big enough. But the more you wear it, the more you realise. I mean, I'm actually wearing this today. This is my scent of the day. It's lovely. It's unctuous. It's oh, it's spicy. It's inviting. It's warm. It's cosy. But it's interesting, and that's what an extraordinary gentleman needs is an interesting fragrance, and this certainly is. It's very, very long lasting, but it's soft, so it's uh, an inviting fragrance. You're not going to walk into a room and dominate it with this. It's not that kind of frag. You're not going to leave, you know, a huge chain behind you, or you know, people aren't going to be, whoa, what is that? That's not how it is. But when people get close to you, they will, you will smell absolutely enchanting. You will smell very exotic and very exciting, and obviously extraordinary. So this is highly recommended. It's quite an expensive fragrance, but deals can be found. And I got this in a Facebook group for an absolute steal. So keep your eyes peeled. Well worth adding to anyone's collection if you like oriental spicy fragrances. Um, and that is a superb one. In fact, it's so good at the moment, it kept Ivory Root out of this list. So uh, there you go. I'm a big fan of that one. Right, next up, we're down to the final three. So we've got three absolutely big hitters now you're probably going to guess what one of them is going to be. Um, so let's start. Okay, here we have, in third place, Musica Oud from Nishane. Beautiful fragrance. Sweet, saffron, oak moss, oud, lots of oud, civet. Big hitting fragrance. Performance is absolutely biblical. I've spoken about this a lot because I think this is an awesome fragrance. The saffron makes it sweet. The oud makes it interesting. The civet makes it animalic. Um, and it's just, ah, oh, the sandalwood dry down on this is perfect. The oak moss is, is just great. It all comes together to make an absolute boss mode fragrance. This is exactly what an extraordinary gentleman would wear, and he will smell extraordinary wearing it. But the civet does make it a bit of a hard sell for people that don't like animatic fragrances. So just be aware, you will need to sample this. Now, I know Nishane do a sample pack. You can get sort of one from each of the collection or whatever. Or, you know, now stores are opening. Please try this. I think they're in Harrods now as well. So if you're in London, you can actually go and smell them. So please sample this first because I've had mixed results with it. People I've thought that would love it have hated it. And people that I thought might be indifferent about it have absolutely loved it. It is massive though, um, and it really, really does kick out. So be aware, St you know, stupidly big performance on this one. Be careful with it, sample it, but I absolutely love it, and it's perfect for the extraordinary gentleman. Okay, down to the last two. Now this is a really, really tough one for me to separate these two because I love them both so much, and they're both the absolute, you know, this person, this extraordinary gentleman kind of brief personified in these two. So. I'm going to go with this one as the number two, and this is Iron Duke from Beaufort, London. I absolutely love this fragrance. I wish I could wear this every day. It's just, it's, it's a little bit too heavy, I think, sometimes for the summer, but, you know, I'll, I'll risk it. This is amazing. This has got gunpowder in it. It's got leather in it. It's got fire in it. It's got, it's got everything in it. It's a smoky, huge hitting fragrance. There's oud in here. There's everything, but because, and I've mentioned this a few times when I've talked about this, there's saddle soap in this, and that gives almost like a shaving foam-like feel to it. So it's like, um, almost like a barbershop that's gone completely berserk, and it, you know, so, sort of combusted into some kind of craziness. Fabulous fragrance, absolutely massive performance. It's just, oh, it's exciting, and it's, it's oh, I think it's lovely. It does get compliments, but it is a bit weird. Um, if you're looking for something safe, if you're into Sauvage and things like that, steer well clear because it's not going to be for you. If you want to smell extraordinary and you want to generate interest and people, you know, you want a conversation piece and you want a fragrance that lasts forever, have a look at that from Beaufort, London, and that is Iron Duke. What a frag. Absolutely adore this one. Worth every penny you pay for this. This is a 50 ml bottle. Um, I've had it a long time and I've barely dented it because you don't need a lot. It really, really does kick out. So there you have it. Highly, highly, highly recommended. But again, like a lot of these, it must be sampled. Okay, and finally, the number one. Yeah, you've guessed it. Auto Parisi Taroni. What a frag. Absolutely love this. There's a full review of, the, of that. There's a full review of most of these. There will be full reviews of any that haven't coming over time. Taroni, I absolutely adore this one. This is probably the most famous fragrance from Auto Parisi. 
and it's certainly the one that garners the most interest. This is black Afghano on steroids with a little bit of interlude band thrown in. Um, there's a lot of paprika, there's smoke, there's fire, there's sweetness, there's woods, there's almost a hint of oud in here. There's a, oh, it's just divine. And the performance is, is just massive. It, it chucks out. It leaves an amazing train. Do not get this on clothes because your clothes will become Taroni. I think this is just an outstanding fragrance. And I know, you know, some people sort of criticise Gaultieri for using this black Afghano DNA. And it's certainly, you know, there's a lot of that black, black Afghano DNA in this one. It's just, it's better. I much prefer this to black Afghano, even vintage black Afghano. This is bigger. It has a massive presence about it. It smells divine. It has everything you want. Massive sillage, massive projection, excellent longevity. Really, really interesting. It changes quite a lot. It reveals its notes. It doesn't just stay in a, in a linear form at all. It's an exciting wear. And when you have a fragrance that lasts as long as this, the fact that it changes, um, I think, just makes it, makes it much more interesting. You know, if you've got a big fragrance that lasts and lasts and lasts, but stays the same for the entire journey, that can get a little bit tiresome. Whereas with Taroni, you're always twisting and turning and picking up something new or something different. I won't be without a bottle of it. It's absolutely amazing. And I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly recommend that you sample it. Um, if you love the black Afghano DNA, you can probably blind buy it um, because, you know, there is, there's enough in it to make it different to BA completely. If you wore them side by side, you would not think that they smell alike. However, in the DNA of the dry down, this does start to remind you a lot of black Afghano. So it is worth looking at. If you, as I say, if you're a fan of black Afghano, you're safe to blind buy this because if you like black Afghano, you will love this. Um, and what I like about this, uh, you know, the, the entire Auto Brazier collection is that these are 50 mil bottles and not the 30 mil that um, are from the Nassimato. So there you have it. That's my listing of extraordinary fragrances for extraordinary gentlemen. Now, I hope you guys are well. I hope you enjoyed the video. We have a ton coming. Um, so please keep, you know, keep, keep your eyes peeled because, uh, you know, we're trying to get the uh, videos out as much as we can. So I hope you enjoyed that. There may well be more videos coming for the uh, gentleman series we haven't decided yet what we're gonna where we're gonna go with them next so we have like the traditional gentleman for the interesting chap and now for the extraordinary gentleman i hope you've enjoyed the three videos um if there are any of these that you'd like to know more about then please put some questions below and i'll be more than happy to answer them or have a look at us on instagram um because we're always trying to put up new fragrances every day or different fragrances every day for my scent of the day just so you can see what else is out there you know we're, we're a question in sense we're not really that interested in mainstream fragrances we're looking for interesting ones that you're going to find interest and that we love so listen as always guys thank you very much for your time it's much appreciated appreciated and we shall see you on the next video. Cheers, thanks and bye!